Hey guys, Credit Shifu here. So this video is a story about how I got my credit score from 0 to 720 in the space of just one year and a guide uh, about how you can do it too. Now to say from 0 to 720, actually there's no 0 in credit scoring, but basically you know what I mean, from a non-existent credit score to 720 in the space of one year. So here's how I did it. I moved to the US from Britain in 2011 and I applied for my first US credit card uh, in the summer of 2014. I would previously had other credit cards in the UK but they didn't count whatsoever, there's no record of them that US uh, credit card companies can search so I'm basically a brand new customer. The reason I applied for this credit card was because I found that in the US if you try to get a cell phone you end up having to pay a large deposit, I paid a $400 deposit uh, for a plan, cell phone plan. Uh, I had to pay a, I think, $300 deposit for the electricity company for the electricity because they didn't trust me because I didn't have a credit score. So you end up having to pay these huge deposits for several things and, you know, all these deposits together it could amount to quite a lot. Uh, when I rented my first apartment in the US because I had no credit score, I had to give three months rent up front in addition to a security deposit of $3,000. So I was handing over like $7,000 to them up front. It was crazy. Um, so you need a credit score. So like I said, I applied for my first credit card in the summer of 2014 and this was the Chase Freedom card. Now this isn't the normal one I would recommend most people apply for as a first credit card uh, and I'll explain why I applied for this one first. Um, so I bank with Chase and there was a record of money going into my account every month. Now I knew that I probably wouldn't get um, approved for this card uh, so, and that was in fact true. When I first applied for it, I got denied. I then went into a Chase bank, I to talked to my banker, and he wrote a letter of recommendation to the credit card department explaining that I am building credit and that's why I want the card, and they approved me. So you can do this too, with you with Chase or with any other bank, and you get denied for their card, um, just go in and explain to them, hey, I'm, you know, I want to build my credit, you can see from my account there's salary going in every month, so I'm not a high-risk individual, I have money to pay it back and they most probably will write you a letter of recommendation which will lead to you getting approved for that card. Now, after I had the Chase Freedom card, uh, so they gave me the minimum balance of $500, after I had the Chase Freedom card, um, I started getting adverts in the mail, uh, junk mail, from Capital One because companies will search your social security number and they'll search your, they'll do soft credit, credit inquiries on your account uh, and they'll see that, oh, this person's credit score is rising and they've got another credit card Maybe they'll want ours too. So I started getting junk mail for Capital One cards and I decided, well, I might as well apply for another card because having more than one card will actually help you uh, improve your credit score. You'd think it'd be the other way around. You're having a lot of cards, they think you're like, you know, a bad person relying on credit. It's actually not the case. The more accounts you have, this has a positive effect on your credit score. The only way it might not is if you apply for a lot of cards within a very small period of time but just in general having a lot of accounts will not harm your credit score. So I applied for the Capital One Platinum. Now this is the card I recommend for most people as a first credit card. If you have just a very low credit score it'll come with a $300 limit and they'll increase it after five months. With me because I already had a credit card and uh, my credit score was already starting to rise uh, they viewed me as a little bit better than the sort of total fresh newbie uh, so they gave me a credit limit of $500 uh, and it did increase after five months I believe to $1,000. So with these two credit cards, I just use them every month. I use the Freedom more than I use the Capital One because the Freedom collected points and cash back and stuff. Uh, Capital One, I just buy a few cups of coffee with it each month just to show that it was being used. Uh, and I just let it chill. I always paid back my bills on time. In fact, I would pay back early several times a month uh, so that I could keep my credit utilization low because credit utilization is a big factor that affects your credit score and will stop it from rising. It's best to keep your credit utilization below 30%. So I had uh, $500 credit limit on each card, so I had $1,000 altogether. Uh, so that means I kept my credit utilization, the amount of credit, I could, the amount of balance I could have, I had to keep it below $300. So I would pay back my card several times a month. So I just did this for a few months and I saw my score rise. Eventually I was over 650, 660 kind of area. Uh, and then I thought, well, I could keep my utilization even lower uh, if I had a higher credit limit. And uh, just, you know, having a larger amount of credit on your credit report um, will look better for credit card companies when you apply for new cards as well. Because don't forget, credit card companies don't just look at your score, they actually look at your whole credit report. Uh, if you've got a very small amount of credit, they might not want to give you a card. So, 
Um, I phoned up Chase and I asked them if I could have a credit limit increase. Um, they said, oh, why do you want an increase? And I said, well, I want to keep my utilization lower. Uh, and I also want to earn ultimate rewards points by making large purchases. And I told him that sometimes I have a large purchase to make, like for example, an air ticket for $1,000, and I can't buy it on the credit card because I don't have a big enough credit limit. I only had $500. Uh, and so he put it through the system, they approved it, and I got a credit limit of $1,500. Uh, so I had $2,000 limit across those two cards. and my utilization was instantly halved because if I spent $300, that's only 15% of 2,000, whereas it's 30% of 1,000. So I halved my utilization, my credit started increasing, I was getting into the upper 600s, around 680, 685. Uh, it was at this time that I applied for the Amex Everyday credit card and actually got denied. And they asked me to send, well not totally denied, but they just asked me for more information and they wanted me to send my um, you know, bank statements to show income. Uh, for me, it was a little bit of a hassle, and I ended up just kind of forgetting about it and not doing it. Uh, around this time, my wife also applied for that card, and she got approved, and she got an extra card for me on her account, so I had the card anyway, so I, I just didn't bother. Um, but the good thing about having cards on someone else's account is that actually their credit shows up uh, as, as yours, and sometimes when banks uh, check your credit uh, report, um, they don't actually realize that these cards are not yours, they're cards on someone else's account. I'm not totally clear on how it works, but sometimes you have to explain to them, actually, this is not my account. And that was the case when I applied for the Sapphire Reserve. They thought I had too many cards, but then I showed them, hey, these two cards or three cards are actually my wife's accounts, so I'm under your 524 rule. Anyway, more about that in another video. Now with this card added and all the credit associated with it, it showed up on my report, it helped to keep my utilization even lower, and my credit just really shot up. Once I got to 700, um, I figured, and this is coming up to almost a year now, this is sort of like the beginning of the following summer 2015, I thought, you know, I'm gonna try applying for another Amex. Uh, so I applied for the Amex Hilton credit card. Uh, now. My score was about 700 and something, low 700, very, you know, 703 or something like that. Uh, I had about uh, $4,000, $5,000 worth of credit now between my own credit and I think like a $2,000 limit on my wife's Amex Everyday card. And I applied for the American Express Hilton card and they approved me with a $10,000 limit. And this, you know, just really helped my score shoot up because I now had access to around $15,000 worth of credit. Uh, which looked great on my credit report for when I applied for new cards um, because some cards they have a minimum credit requirement so like some cards will say the minimum credit limit on this card for example the Sapphire Preferred is $5,000 if you haven't got access to $5,000 overall credit already they often won't give you that card and with the Sapphire Reserve it's a $10,000 minimum credit line so when they see another card with a $10,000 line on your credit report and they see that you're responsible using that, always paying on time, uh, they're far more likely to approve you for their card which has a minimum uh, credit line of $10,000. Um, so after I got this card, um, my utilization went way down. It was like, I don't know, 7.5% or something. Um, and it, it, by about a year after I applied for my first credit card, my credit score uh, had reached around 720. Uh, we're now coming up to two years after I applied for my first credit card and um, in recent months my credit score, uh, right now it's around 750, it reached about 756 a couple, like a month or two ago, that was its peak, it's gone down a little bit, it's gonna probably come back up again. Uh, it fluctuates all the time, you know, depending on your utilization, how much balance you have, and uh, if you open a new account, or if you have a hard inquiry, or whatever. Um, so now we've kind of told the story, I'm gonna look at just a few factors of what I did right uh, to allow this score to increase so quickly. Number one is that I always paid on time. If you think that you're not gonna be able to pay off uh, your credit card, you're gonna spend beyond your means, don't go to credit cards, simple as that, all right? Just don't do it. You're gonna get yourself into more trouble than it's worth. But if you are able to only spend the amount of money you're earning and you just spend it on a credit card, pay it back on time, uh, that's gonna look great on your credit report. On time payments, they are a big factor that affects uh, your credit score. Then we have credit utilization. I always kept my utilization below 30%, now I keep it below 
Last time I checked, my utilization was below 8%. Of course, I have about $47,000 worth of credit now, so it's very easy to keep my utilization low. And you know, 47,000 sounds a lot to people who aren't used to this, and they're like, oh my God, you know, how do you trust yourself with all that? Actually, it's very easy, just be disciplined. Don't spend your, beyond your means, and you'll be fine. The number really doesn't mean anything. It's not free money, you have to pay it back, so. Um, another thing that I've done right is that I did not close my first account or any of my early accounts that I opened. In fact, I haven't closed any uh, US credit card accounts. Uh, and that's because they look at the overall length of your credit history. And this is done by taking the average age of your account. So, so if you close your oldest account, it's going to make the average age of your account shorter. Uh, so that's, that's a bad thing. You should don't close a credit card account unless there's some reason for doing so, like it's a terrible credit card that's charging you fees um, that you don't, you know, you don't benefit from. Uh, or even if it's a card that you don't want anymore, let's say the Sapphire Preferred, uh, you got the reserve, so you, you take your Sapphire Preferred, you can downgrade it to a freedom. You don't have to close the account. Um, you can just call them up and say, I want to do a product change. I would like to downgrade my account, my credit card to one that has no annual fee. Uh, and they'll do that for you. Okay. You can do that. And it saves you harming your credit score through uh, closing an account. Um, so guys, if you just follow these simple steps, it's actually very, very easy to get your credit score over 700 in the space of a year or so. Um, you just, as long as you have no bad information on your credit report, uh, you will be able to do it and it will increase very fast. And this of course opens a world of opportunities, whether it's exciting new credit cards or whether it's just avoiding big deposits when you buy a cell phone or you um, open an account with an electricity company or having to pay a huge deposit when you rent an apartment. Um, having a credit score in the US really is everything. It really helps you make it in the society and avoid a lot of unnecessary hassle. So hey guys, I hope you like this video. Please leave your comments below. Tell us your stories of climbing the credit card ladder uh, and you know maybe you experienced some of the things I did, maybe you didn't. Please let our fans know. I know they would like to hear your stories too. Um, you can check out my video, which I'll put on screen in just a moment, how to climb the credit card ladder. That explains my tier system, kind of gives you an idea of the sort of order through which uh, you should apply for what credit card and when, depending on your credit score. It's kind of interesting, probably can help you out. Of course, I have a score of about 750 now, so I can pretty much apply for any credit card. I have the Sapphire Reserve, I have the Amex Platinum. Um, actually, people say once your score is over 700, you can pretty much apply for any credit card. Uh, that's sort of true as long as you've got a reasonable income. I would say 750 and you're really uh, cemented in there really short. So thanks so much guys for watching. Please subscribe to The Credit Shivu and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.